hello our beautiful youtubers you got joanne and elizabeth here with world's cup of joe awaken your soul you got your soul sisters your soul sisters here with you in this crazy cray cray beautiful twin flame journey this journey is hard it's crazy and we are with you my love me and Elizabeth are both in permanent relating experiences with our twin flames. We see them every day, my love. Let's get real. This is the channel to add on your subscribers list. There's so many people that try to share this connection and they're not in permanent relating experiences. How can you tell? Well, they're not giving you applicable, <laughs> applicable scenario situations and ways to shift with balancing them. It's fine to hear all these ideas about how to get your person and then just hide around the most important part of this connection, which is every time they contact you, every time you see them, now what, right? <laughs> this is why me and Elizabeth created this channel because we wanted you all to have an outlet to access truth in balancing your twin flame connection. This connection is hard, but it's real and we are real and raw with you with the truths so that you can balance your connection in permanent relating experiences if you so choose. So this is the channel to subscribe to if you are truly in a twin flame connection. And if you found this channel, you were divinely guided. So we are here with you, my loves, and we have a question to share from one of our soul family, and we're just gonna get really deep in it. And I think it's a common question, especially in this journey, when you're faced with so many mind things, how do you balance that when you're trying to stay in soul? So go ahead and read it, my love. Hello, everybody. Here is the question. How can I deal with practical life situations remaining as true as possible to who I really am, soul, if I must deal with the situation using mind. A couple of examples, finances. When I must donate or give to things the mind doesn't want to give to, and also my looks. Let me more, get more specific on that. I recorded myself and watched the video later and saw that my face had aged. My mind was triggered to see my face older and with a tired look and it felt a bit ashamed and it made me think that if one day my person were to see that video he would not love me because i look so much older he is much younger my mind even wanted to delete that post of my recording as my face didn't look radiant and young and perfect how do we deal with these mind situations and stay in soul in the process so for the first one this one with money this is gonna be a deep-rooted issue for a lot of people when they have fears about money because it stems more than, than the money. It's something that mind has is clinging to, almost like an identity, right? So soul doesn't care. We have to get to this place where there is no duality. That's what we are trying to do in every now moment. How do we get to this place where we can release the mind's fear of needing something externally to make us feel safe and really we this is where you have to go within like i am safe i am good i need nothing because ultimately we need nothing in this world we came into this world with nothing and we're going to leave it with nothing and as long as the mind has something to fear it will fear and i'm not saying that this is wrong remember there is no right or wrong this is just something that there is I had a lot of fears around money and I had to get to this point where I reminded myself consciously, consciously over and over that I am not the fear. I'm the one who's watching the fear. And in practical sense, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to always make decisions when you're aligned with soul, especially when it comes to finances. So what does that look like? It looks like when you are in the place because there's always two modes of energy. There's gonna be fear and there's gonna be love. There's gonna be fear and there's gonna be soul. What does it look like to make a decision in fear? Well, if you make financial decisions in fear, you're gonna keep recreating the lack. You're gonna create, keep creating the energy that brings you more bills, that brings you more stress with money. So you're gonna to wanna to spend with an open heart. You're going to, even if it's a bill, 
And what does that look like in a place of gratitude? I'm so grateful that I have this last amount of money to send to my bills. I'm so grateful that I can pay for this. I'm so grateful that if I need to donate, I'm able to. And I know that money is going to circulate. I know it's going to come back to me. And whatever I need, the universe is going to provide. When you can give with gratitude and an open heart, it seriously will make a world of difference in your life with your finances. Right now, it sounds like there's a lot of fear tied to how you spend. And that same fear is coming back in how you receive. So you've got to really be conscious with your finances. Otherwise, you're going to keep being in this lack mode and you're going to keep seeing the finances reflecting that lack mode. And I know, Joanne, you're going to take more. You're going to you're going to go deeper into that because you are amazing when it comes to finances and the relationship you have with the energy of money. So I, I'm excited to hear your take on it. But now with looking at yourself, and seeing a reflection that you weren't happy with. You know, there's a part of us, the mind part of us that looks at ourselves and it is gonna judge. And I was just telling you, Joanne, the other day, um, I was talking about a person I know who's close to their 70s and they still can't be in acceptance of their appearance. And I was saying to you, like, when, when is the time that we love ourselves, regardless of what our appearance is? There's got to be this place where we can get to, where we can be in at peace and acceptance of our physical, because our physical is not us. As long as we keep being in the place where we are judging ourselves, we're going to not ever be able to be our highest and best selves. We're looking at ourselves through the eyes, through the lens that our physical is us. And as as long as you're doing that, we're never going to be able to fully love ourselves. So I would say when it comes to looking at the mirror, if the mind starts saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. I really want you to call the mind out and say, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. The more you can see yourself as perfect, the more that reflection is going to show you the perfection that you are. Your question, they're all the same thing. You are the conscious observer of mind. And it is mind that judges. It is mind that judges and worries about what other people think. It is mind that has a preference of what people think of you aging. It is mind that has a preference of how money will be spent. In the place of soul, in the place of pure being, it is a place of gratitude, it is a place of acceptance, and it is a place of love. And so whenever I spend money, I don't think of it like I'm spending money. I honestly think of it like I am recycling money. <laughs> so I want you to have a healthy relationship with when you share your abundance and so when we hold on and cling to the money that we have if there's a part of you that really wanted to share it then you share it and if you don't then you don't and you are being with your decision when you're going back and forth on it then you're now in mind and now you're clinging to that energy of lack so it's okay to make decisions of, hey, I choose to not take part in this. That's absolutely fine. But the fact that the mind was making you go back and forth on it is now keeping you in mind. So you can sit with your, your decisions and just be like, this is what I choose. And I trust my soul and the best and highest good is always coming. Or you could choose to share your abundance and just send it with, love and gratitude without any expectations or preference of what comes about from sharing. And you get to reprogram all of those limiting beliefs that you have with um, money. And that's totally okay. You know, a lot of times when we're growing up, our relationship with money is how we were raised with money. 
become awakened and we recognize that money is simply energy and that it, it, it isn't what we were raised to think it was. And so money is energy and you send that money with love. Or if you don't see yourself being able to send it with love, then you are sending it with fear. And so I want you and all of you to really sit with yourself when you're spending, like I said, it's recycling. <laughs> when you're spending money, send it with love. When you're paying a bill, send it with love. When you're receiving money, send it with love. And you will find that money starts working for you because money is honestly energy. And so I close my eyes and I feel the energy of abundance because I can feel it. That it's a different energy. I know this is really cheesy, but I'm serious. Once you start tapping into energy, recognizing the energy of soul and mind, love and fear, you can recognize the energy of abundance and then energy of poverty energy, like the lack that you, you can feel the energy and you can quickly identify it. When you're aligned with soul, you're in aligned with abundance and you can absolutely trust that your soul is bringing in the most vibrant um, abundance in your every experience. And then when you have a limiting belief or a fear around money, you can cancel them and realign with soul. So that's going to be your your ability to balance those triggers. Same with, with aging. Who the F cares what anyone thinks? This is the vessel I'm in and I love how I look because this is where I am right now. Like I honestly, I love my like crevices. I love my wrinkles. I love the white hairs that pop in my hair sometimes. Who the F cares? <laughs> what anyone thinks about how you look my love embrace and love the vessel that you are in now obviously this takes a lot of time and it's probably not going to be overnight you're going to have to um, sit with acceptance and love for the vessels you're absolutely right your soul loves you unconditionally and the more that you love yourself unconditionally the more everyone else will as well so embrace the temporary vessel that is showing you that you are in this vessel for a limited of time. So what's really cool, majority of people, they look to their physical attributes to allow people to recognize who they are, right? Now that you're awakened, you recognize that the true beauty is inner. It's inner, it's, it's deep, right? It's inside out. And the more that you shine your light inside, the more your light shines in the outward. And so all the people, they don't know that and all they have is their looks. And when they age, they don't have that radiant natural beauty in the inside out that radiates for them. The more you're lighting your inside love and light within you, the more other people can see that as well. And so when your mind gets triggered and it thinks less of the beauty that you are inside, be and sit with that because you are going to project those fears and limitations that the mind is giving you when you can actually learn to love the imperfections. Like I seriously, I look in the mirror and I'm like, I effing love. <laughs> I love me. I love everything about me. And I love me now. It doesn't matter how I look to anyone else. I freaking love me. And I'm telling you, love the people I'm around love me for me. And they see the inner beauty from inside that I've worked so hard in. So what's on the outside doesn't matter. The less you give any Fs on the outside and focus more on the inside, the more people will be drawn to your light and your love. I've had more attention on my, my like physical attributes, the less I've given an F. I don't know why. <laughs> I used to care so much about what I think people think about me and the less and less I've cared about that and really just really feeling to what I think about me, how I feel, how much I love every part of me, that gets reflected out. Remember, you are literally the universe and what you are feeling within is what you are projecting out. So you're simply creating a mirror for yourself. 
So if there's something lacking or limited from the inside, give that love. And in the outside, other people will give you that same love you give with yourself. And that is absolutely true when it comes to this journey. Our people sees that radiance and love of soul the more we're aligned with soul. Everyday triggers are normal. So sit with them, be with them. You're not doing anything different than what you already are. What you're doing is actually really, really beautiful love. You're you're aligning with soul and calling out the mind. And so what I would recommend with what you're already doing on top of that is to journal them out. And when you journal them out, you can list what mind is saying. And then on the other side, list what soul is. And then you bring it back to presence. So I love that you can name what mine is saying, but the last two steps is what you're missing is, is being able to call out the mind, align with soul and bring it back to presence. And you might have to do that a million times until it's no longer a fear and it's no longer triggering you. It's going to get to a point where you're watching, you're going to be like, whoa, the mind was really triggered about that. And that doesn't mess with me anymore. And that's when you know you've leveled up through that limiting belief because the fears are simply energy that you took in from before when you took them it was painful it's going to be painful to take them out but that's going to be a lot of inner work that you do and sit with until they're released and you can realign and come back to presence we love you guys so much we hope you have an amazing day bye love bye love